Hello and welcome to another episode of Invive Entry. My name is James Taylor. Uh, today we're going to be looking at a little library which was recommended to me by some great people on tw uh, Reddit. Uh, so I really respect that. Um, it's a it's going to be a short one today. Um, I am a little bit behind on my recording schedule, so I do apologise for that. Um, today we're looking at a library called Or Jason, Or Jason. Um, I wonder if there's a pun there. I'm not quite getting. And basically, it's a wrapper around JSON. It's a fast, correct JSON, I believe, Python. And it benchmarks faster, they reckon, than any other JSON library or third-party libraries. And it's faster than JSON. It also does a couple of neat things out the box. And I think its serialization is better. Uh, so very basically, um, you would normally do um, JSON inbuilt library. Sounds fantastic. So if I have a, a, a dictionary or something, I'll go like um, X is 4 uh, and Z is hello and I would do JSON dot dumps like that okay and 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 you deserialize it and then you would take that and you would put everything I put X in twice there obviously just to see if you're watching uh, and and there you go that is my output it's a string output uh, interesting it's a Unicode string output there because you're going to get some fun stuff however sometimes you're working really hard and you've got this um, object lying around in there. Uh, and I before I run that, I'm going to spot from date time import date time, um, and it gives you a type error straight away. You cannot uh, serialize an object because it doesn't have a JSON serializable form on it, and that's really annoying. So there's a whole bunch of stuff like NumPy arrays, which aren't really arrays, um, things like date time stuff, which you use a lot, and then you want to put in JSON. If you're ever calling APIs or doing responses. I use date times and responses all the time, say, when did I process this request and then I see this request. Uh, you may do like a Django model where you've got a date time for a database, you just want to throw it in some JSON on the API response. Um, so, of course, I'd have to write some extra code here, do uh, str format, whatever, and all the rest of it. So, don't want to do that. I want to make it simple. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to import or JSON, which basically has the same interface here. So, I can just do or JSON that dumps now. And it gives me back the um, a binary string, not a string at this point, which is actually more correct for Python because this is a encoded string, of course. And it's already serialized that for me. So when I deserialize that, or JSON goes to the date time and puts it back into a date time object for me, which is really powerful. Or I can take it to put it back. Not only that, date time itself, or rather here, it actually has a really cool thing on serialization. So it can do date, date classes and date times. It has built into it things like NumPy arrays, things like that which makes it super powerful. It can store date times on here. Um, but yeah, basically the idea behind this is that it's a better library. If you're starting to do custom classes and things, you can then actually serialize and deserialize. But you have to tell it how it's deserialized. You do have to tell it this object here is actually this class um, because of course it doesn't know. It, uh, JSON doesn't have like metadata attached to a JSON object. Uh, there's not an obvious way to go from a JSON object to an object in code. Um, and of course, you should always be careful about deserializing unsecured inputs. So if you put a JSON object somewhere, you should probably verify is the object you put. Maybe use it's dangerous, for example, to sign your objects. Um, but either way, uh, it is a very, very cool little library. Uh, I really appreciate uh, being told about it because it has some really nice applications when you don't when you want to focus on giving data back and not focus on oh now I have to encode it or doing weird things if I've got an object for like a, a, a Django class thing it, it, it makes it easier for me to then just send that to a, an API output so that's all today nice short one if you're enjoying these videos they are making 24 videos in 24 days for advent um, I'm focusing this advent on Python libraries, cool, fun Python libraries, little Python libraries as well. Short videos only as an introduction, as a taster, so that you can use these libraries. You can put these libraries in your arsenal of cool things to use. So if you're interested, maybe you've got some ideas of some libraries you'd like to see, or libraries that you use. If so, let me know in the comments. Um, and I will see you all in the next episode.